Oh my goodness, what a beautiful day. What a beautiful Friday. Oh yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Are you doing good? Oh my gosh, I'm so thankful for you joining me. I'm so thankful for you listening. I'm so thankful for you watching. Yes, this is the Matthew Rayburn Show. And yes, this is my studio apartment. Thank you so much for joining me. Hashtag wear red day. You wearing your red? You should be. I'll explain a little bit. We're going to be talking about a little bit of politics. We're going to be talking about a little bit of news. A little bit of fake news. A little bit of uh, controversial news. A little bit of different sources news. Uh, We're going to be talking about how 90% of Americans are extremely excited about being alive. We're going to be talking about uh, a strange fear that I kind of mildly tend to as well, but it's No Fear Friday. We're going to shed our fears. We're going to be brave here on No Fear Friday. We're going to do a little bit of weird news. I like bats, but I don't like bats this much. Uh, that's going to be some weird news later, but like this video, share this video, comment down below, uh, notify yourself, subscribe. Let's do this thing. Matthew Rayburn Show. <laughs> yes, I am live. I am Matthew Rayburn. This is my studio apartment. Uh, thank you so much once again for listening and joining me. Uh, you can follow me uh, at Matthew Rayburn, M-A-T-T-R-A-B-O-R-N. Uh, the Twitters, the Facebooks, the YouTubes, find me. I'm there. Comment down below. Um, all that said, I'm so thankful for you joining me. And once again, I've said that like nine times, but that, because you know why? I'm in a continual state of betterment. And I, I, I'm, I'm in a positive force for good. And I'm really stoked about just being here with you and you being here with me. So let's begin with a little bit of word of the day. If you don't use your words, you're going to lose your words. Uh, today's word of the day is infantilize. Infantilize. It's a verb. Okay, so you, you, you would do it. <laughs> infantilize. I-N-F-A-N-T-I-L-I-Z-E. Infantilize. First definition, to make or keep infantile. Second definition, to treat as if infantile. So patronizing can be uh, used closely to this to this word, uh, but more like um, when you use dog speak towards a dog or baby speak towards a baby. Um, I, I try not to infantize my nephews that are, uh, you know, five, six years old. I, uh, I, I want to treat them as not men, but boys, to speak to them clearly, because they're smart, they're intelligent, they, they look at you in the eye, they comprehend what you're saying, they copy what you say, so be careful. Uh, but it's a real thing, so you don't want to infantilize the youth, because therefore they don't have any incentive to become adults. They have baby speak uh, in their brains uh, a lot. And I understand uh, if you've raised a lot of kids and you're a foster mother or if you've had a lot of children or if you've worked in a daycare or the nursing home or whatever, uh, the, the nursing department at, uh, at church and you say, um, oh, I got to go potty or, or you say like childish things accidentally, like, you know, but, but you're not trying to cut up other people's food when you're at the table. You're not trying to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, do you need help in the restroom you know, with, with grown people? No, no. So, so don't infantilize uh, grown people. And, and I, I don't really recommend infantilizing children either because, well, they're going to eventually be adults, so treat them like people uh, older than babies, but older than children because they're going to just, just I, I like to use big words around them. I like to not necessarily talk about heavy concepts like politics or religion, but yeah, sometimes I do. <laughs> Anyways, word of the day, infantilize. Use your words. Otherwise, you'll lose them. It, English language is a beautiful thing. Utilize it. I dare you to put infantilize in your vocabulary today. <laughs> All right, let's do, uh, I love life. Don't you love life? I mean, and being in a continuous state of betterment and, and a positive force for good and, and trying not to become a sponge of darkness. Matt, what's a sponge of darkness? A sponge of darkness is one who holds a lot of negativity, harbors it, and it metastasizes into negative behavior. Uh, if you soak in a lot of negativity on Twitter, on, on social media, uh, from, from politics, from things that you hate, things that you love, sports, things you can't control, and you, and you get upset and you get resentful and, and you get kind of weird, well, that's called being a sponge of darkness. You stink, uh, you, you rot, uh, no one wants to be around you, no one wants to touch you. Uh, those are wonderful metaphors uh, that, that I like to use for the sponge of darkness. Don't be one. Anyways, let's talk about National Day. It's easy to celebrate life when you celebrate National Day. Uh, we've got, uh, you can go to uh, nationaldaycalendar.com and find out the national days of today. But right now I'm going to tell you them so you don't have to. February 7th, 2020, National Wear Red Day. Yes, I'm wearing a red tie, a red fake flower, and a red pocket square. 
Uh, National Wear Red Day is on the first Friday of February. It's an annual campaign to raise awareness about heart disease in women. Are you aware of heart disease in women? Now you are, because one in three women die of heart disease, and 80% of these um, ailments are preventable. So get checked, uh, uh, get exercising. We all love women. We all came from women. So we want to help sure that women stay healthy. Has, use hashtag wear red, go, there's like five of them. Uh, wear red day, hashtag go red, wear red, hashtag go red, get fit day. <laughs> there's many ways to utilize it. Just wear red, uh, bring an awareness campaign for diseases that can be prevented. Men also have similar situations, but today it's specifically for the ladies. It's also National Send a Card to a Friend Day. I recommend doing that. It's really special. It's really thought-provoking and, and, and like endearing when you receive a, a card from somebody, especially out of the blue. So celebrate National Send a... Uh, oh, I've got a situation going. Where I'm live here on Facebook because something's going on. To in be my, uh, a Trump supporter, folks. We are on Interesting. The, Guys, so I'm live here I'm on my Facebook, yeah, but I don't know exactly what's down happening down on my oh, other yes, screen yes, here. So I'm thankful Trump for you joining me. I'm going to turn this off. Oh, okay. But another thing about... Oh, here we go. Another thing about the Matthew Reverend shows, it's live, okay? So, you never know really what's going to happen. And so I'm trying to turn something off that just turned on. So let's, let's try to do that together. <laughs> I am live. This is a live show. Live shows are fun because you don't know what's going to happen. All right, so we're going to do that later. Uh, that turned off. And so I'm not going to be on Twitter or uh, Periscope um, for this particular show, and so it's fun to, to watch a little fiasco You know, it's, it's fun. Anyway, so let's continue with National Day. Send a card to a friend day. Uh, really, it's, it's good. So to receive a card out of the blue from a friend is a beautiful thing. Um, but what, the next thing I really wanted to talk about, and, and really what I recommend doing is once a month, and it's the beginning of the month, it's the, kind of the end of the first week, but get on, get, you know, get on the ball. Go through your contact list. Go through your email list. And text, email, message these people that you haven't in a while. Just say hi, just say hey, just say what's up. Hey, are you doing good? I hope you are, because life is good. And I'm thinking about you, and I hope you're doing well. You don't really need anything in return, you just really wanna send some positive energy to them in word form. So send them an electronic message, send them an actual message in the mail, whatever it is, send a friend a message. It's good because it builds a stronger community, it builds camaraderie, it makes you a better person, it brightens their day, you might receive something in the mail. It's just good, it's all around good. So I recommend doing that. So you so use hashtag send a card to a friend day today. It's also National Periodic Table Day. Uh, I like the periodic table. I love science. I did well in school in science. Uh, so I'm going to celebrate by telling you that gold is my favorite element. Not because it's shiny, not because it's valuable, just because I like the joke. Uh, oh, that's a pure gold joke. That's AU on the periodic table. That's a joke I like to use. Anyway, it, it sounds better when it's in the moment. But uh, you can challenge yourself by challenging your friends uh, of their knowledge of the periodic table. You can refresh yourself on the history of the periodic table and how it's changed and the newer elements that have been joined on the older periodic table. <laughs> use, use hashtag periodic table day and your social media posts today. <laughs> um, National Bubblegum Day. Uh, celebrating Bubblegum Day in the first Friday of February. Uh, doesn't burst anyone's bubble. It's a fun way to chew your favorite flavor of bubblegum, blow some spectacular bubbles, and raise some money too. Long before Bubblegum Day helps us raise money for schools and charities they support. Students donate 50 cents to be able to chew bubblegum in their class uh, on Bubblegum Day. Long before any substantial chewing gum formed bubbles, ancient human beings chewed bits of resin from trees all around the world, people collected substances from the available trees and used them for dental care and general enjoyment. <laughs> people putting tree parts in their mouth. <laughs> it wasn't until 1928, after decades of failure by those before him and several of his own, that Walter Deemer created the first bubble-producing gum. His employer... The, Fle the Fleer Chewing Gum Company marketed it as Double Bubble. 
little history there for you on the Matthew Everton Show. Use hashtag Bubblegum Day in your social media posts today. Post a video of you popping your large bubblegum bubble. Do it. <laughs> it's also National Fettuccine Alfredo Day on on February 7th. National Live Show. National Fettuccine Alfredo Day celebrates one of the world's favorite enjoyed plates of fettuccine. Fettuccine Alfredo enjoys a history as rich as its flavor. Created in 1908, fettuccine was made out of love and concern by an Italian restaurateur, Alfredo di Lieno, Sir, uh, concerned for his pregnant wife's lack of appetite, caused him to put his talents to work. The birth of their first son depended on it. His recipe of noodles, cheese, and butter not only encouraged her to eat, but she also inspired uh, him to put it on the menu. Uh, since then, the century-old dish has been seen satisfying pasta lovers around the world ever since. Not only... Uh, but the fettuccine Alfredo lover's experience, blah, 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 it's good. Okay, put shrimp, put broccoli, put other chicken in it. It's fantastic, okay? Fettuccine Alfredo. Use hashtag Fettuccine Alfredo Day in your social media posts today. <laughs> that was National Day. There was also a fiasco earlier about a certain camera that went down. So I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on Periscope. Am I going to be later? No, because I'd like to do it live. That's live. But I'm still on Facebook. I'm so thankful for you joining me and watching me. I got a little hairy earlier. And uh, a little wild and fun. So we did that, we did that, and we did that. Let's do a little bit of weird news. I love weird things and I love news. And together it creates my favorite segment of the show, Weird News. Uh, see here. Enormous bat colony takes over Australian town. Weird. A small town in Australia has been overrun by enormous colony of bats and frustrated residents have had enough of the annoying aerial invaders. The problem has reportedly been getting steadily worse over the last few weeks as the population of flying foxes, creatures are bigger down there, <laughs> in the community of Ingham has grown to the point that experts believe that there are now around 300,000 of the creatures taking up residence there. To put that into some perspective, approximately 4,500 people live in the town. As one can imagine, the bat infestation has caused a slew of problems for the community since the creatures have seemingly taken a liking to a gathering to gathering in the town's botanical garden. Many of the trees' branches have snapped due to the weight of the animals and the population of such. Meanwhile, a rescue helicopter attempting to land a hospital sorry, at a hospital in the town recently had to be diverted because it would have flown into a proverbial cloud of bats as it continued on its journey. What? And of course, with 300,000 of the creatures flying around each day, the ground below has become a vertible litter box to the point that local businesses and town workers are forced to clean up the bat droppings every morning. Weird and gross. <laughs> Perhaps the most nightmarish aspect of the invasion occurs for about an hour each night and every morning when the animals uh, fill the sky. The noise is horrendous, said reporter Pippa Bradshaw, as she stood beneath the massive swarm, quote, the smell is putrid and lingers long after the bats have flown away for the evening, end quote. With the creatures now moving closer to schools in the community, residents are concerned that the children will get scratched and the invasive animals will in turn become, uh, will get the uh, children sick. As such, some parents have threatened to boycott sending their kids to school because of the matter. <laughs> However, when it comes to solving the problem, the town has run up against something of a bat bureaucracy, figures. As it turns out, the creatures are a protected species in the area, and the strict regulations surrounding the animal status say that, non, that only non-lethal measures can be used to disperse the creatures. Compounding the complication, <laughs> such tactics can only be used when the bats are not in mating season. Weird news. Bats. Wink. Now, yeah, a little crazy, a little stinky, a little, a little hairy. They said flying foxes. No, there's some big bats. I understand flying rats, but flying foxes? Get out of here. That's ridiculous. All right, we talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about that. Um, let's talk about... Um, yeah, yeah, let's do that real quick. Okay, 
So what I think is interesting is how when you start talking to people about what you think about life, about you know, you're commenting on the news, you're commenting on existence, whatever it is. It could be sports, it could be politics, it could be the economy, whatever it is. And kind of you can tie them all in together, which is my favorite thing to do. <laughs> um, but it's fascinating how people can read the same article and come up with different conclusions. People can look at a ball that is red and say, well, I mean, I think it's red-orange. Well, I think it's orange-red. And then you have a weird argument about what color it is when the, it's just a ball that's red. Uh, is the economy actually doing great? Well, today the job market just added, let's see, 225,000 jobs. Now, this article, this information comes from CNBC, which normally doesn't give the Trump administration any accolades. But uh, some bullet points here. Non-farm payroll served at 225,000 for the month, well above Wall Street's estimated uh, estimation. The unemployment rate ticked higher to 3.6, but for the right reason, it ticked up, as the labor force participation rate increased 2.2 percentage points uh, to uh, 63.4 matching its highest level since June 2013. An average hourly earnings has rode 3.1% uh, since a year ago. All right, so people have more money in their pockets. People have more opportunities. The economy is growing. These are stats that I read. I can even get you know, further details. So it says it marks the 112th month of straight growth. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we talked about those percentages. Yeah, so... It rose, so wages rose an average of seven cents in the past year to an average of twenty-eight dollars and forty-four cents per hour. So it's just like, so it's doing well. So are, are, are is this information wrong? Was I lied to? Am I reading a, reading a, multiple fake news websites? I don't think so. But when you bring up these facts to people that disagree with the orange man in office, oh my God! First, first of all, they get triggered because they're, they suffer from Trump derangement syndrome, and second of all. I don't, even, it's like I'm, I don't even know what happens because all of a sudden reality goes out the window and I lose my cool. Woo! I lose my cool because I'm trying to, to talk about facts and then I get emotional because they're not, they're not listening or they're not, they're not getting it because of the derangement. And then they start spewing things that are emotional arguments of things that, yes, I might be upset about, but have nothing to do with the premise of what I was bringing up. It's probably because they can't win the argument, so they want to change the argument. My goodness, it's ridiculous. My, but my point is... I think it's just so fascinating how the the thickness of confirmation bias, which I also suffer from, to, from suffer from as well at times. I'm I'm not an idiot. I'm not a fool, and I'm self aware of myself. And you shouldn't be as well. You probably also suffer from confirmation bias, Matt. What's confirmation bias? Well, you read something, and whether whether it agrees with you or disagrees with you, you're gonna compartmentalize it in your brain until it agrees with you, or you're gonna dismiss it as fake or wrong or completely stupid if it disagrees with you. That's what confirmation bias is. We all suffer from it. We all do it, some more so than others. And some others aren't willing to admit that they do it. I'm emotionally consistent and healthy enough to say that I do that, but hopefully not all the time because I'm trying to be, become better. I'm going to continue to say betterment and a positive force for good. And I want to engage in people's conversations, not in a budding conversations, but as I engage in people's conversations, with my <laughs> people, as I keep saying it wrong, as I engage in conversation, I want it to be enriched. I want it to be valuable. I don't want to be talking about things that don't really matter. I don't really talk. I don't want to talk about the weather. You can't control the weather. I, I'd like to talk about sports, but that matters a lot less than politics and and the economy and, and world events and coronavirus and all that kind of stuff. And I'd rather talk about conspiracy theories because I can tie it into politics a lot easier that way. Anyways. Anyways, it's a fun hobby. I like to talk to people. I like to use my mouth. I like to speak. That's why you're watching the Matthew Abram Show, and I'm so thankful for that. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Comment down below. Share this video. Like this video. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube page. I'm going to be uploading more things there. I'm going to get, be getting more active on there. If you watched from the beginning, you saw a little bit of fiasco with a certain camera that I had. So I had to fix some things. But I'm back on track, baby, and we're going to move forward. So the economy is thriving. It's okay to say that. Just because you may hate the orange man doesn't mean the policies aren't working. Just because you hate his personality doesn't mean the policies aren't working. Okay. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right, so we talked about that. We talked about that. Um, you know, let's, okay, let's talk about a little bit about the coronavirus. I kind of brought it up a little bit, but it's just a real thing. We forgot that communism is bad. I mean, we forgot that anybody that condones communism probably is bad, and China is communist, and so they've been lying about the, how bad the coronavirus is. For, I forgot to do a premise of the opinion on here, but if you've been watching the Matthew Abram show, you know that I give my opinion a lot in there. So I'm going to read an article here. China virus crisis deepens as whistleblower doctor dies. <laughs> okay, so, so, so I'm not going to go into it really, but I'm not going to read it. 
the doctor that was the whistleblower late in December that said, hey, we got a new virus out here. It's affecting hundreds of people and, you're, and the, we don't know what to do with it and we help, help, help. Well, he died from the virus that he was telling everybody about. Probably because he was, you know, sticking his hands wrist deep in the problem, trying to solve it with the people that are sick with it. And, you know, and all of a sudden he got, so what, what's happening is they're, they're, they're quarantining cities, towns, counties, pe keeping people in their homes. Then also taking the sick people that are in the homes out of those homes and keep them in, in, in a giant warehouse where, where I don't, you don't know what's going to happen there. Welcome to information from Chinese, communist Chinese. Chinese people are not bad. Chinese people are beautiful. Chinese people are human. They need Christ. They need love. They need, they need a love. They're human. You know, they bleed red blood. They, they breathe blue sky. They take brown poops just like the rest of us. The people are fantastic. Communism is of the devil. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so dark. It takes away your humanity. It takes away all kinds of everything. It's so evil. It's so wrong. It always has been and always will be. And it's funny how people want to be individuals. People want to, you know, do the best they can and strive forward, and and, and, then, and then, then then they make fun of capitalism, and then they make fun of economic freedom, and then they then they celebrate socialism and think that communism is okay. It's not. It takes away your freedom. It takes away your individuality, and you die quicker underneath that system. Look at all these people that are dying. Look it up. And then guess what? All these stats that the Chinese government's giving out, just double it. Just double it. Just 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 be cynical and double it. Matt, you don't know for for a fact, but I do know for a fact that communists lie, so they can keep in power. I do know that for a fact. And so you're going to tell me that only 630 people died and only 31,000 people are infected. Yeah, right. Double both of those. That's insane. That's ridiculous. I'm sick and tired of people condoning like it's not that bad or... Okay, the coronavirus isn't even that, that scary. You want to talk about something that's scary is the common flu. Okay, that, that's actually scary. Thou hundreds of thousands have died about from this this year alone. And we're like, meh, I might not take the flu shot. Meh, I might not. Did you take it? I don't know. Did you? I don't know. It's free over there at Walgreens. You can take it if you want. I don't know. Maybe. And so it's like... But the coronavirus isn't where near as bad as the flu virus, but everyone's making a big stink about it because it's new. And also, they're making a big stink about it because of where it comes from. It didn't, where it says here, it says, uh, it says that it came from, the virus has since spread across the government, and it came from strange animals at a market. All right, so that, that's where it alleged, but guess what? This market is not even a mile away from a... <laughs> a bio-warfare chemical plant, okay? They got coronavirus in a lab getting worse and worse, you know, and, they're, and they're tweaking it to get worse and worse and stronger. I don't know why we have, you have these factories. I don't know why you have this bio-warfare situation. It's like, wait, wait, bio-warfare? Were you trying, were you trying to planning on using that on us? Was not, you're not trying to use it on yourself, except when it accidentally leaks or something weird happened, and then it spreads out and you can't control it because you lied about it in the first place. Goodness gracious, man, you got a little passionate there. Yes, I did. I don't like to see people get sick. I don't like to get lied to, and I hate communism. Matthew Rayburn Show. <laughs> La -da 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 Let's lighten the mood a little bit. Let's talk about something silly, but something serious at the same time. Let's talk about omphalophobia. Omphalophobia is the fear of belly buttons. I'm, I don't suffer from omphalophobia, um, uh, but others do. Uh, people with omphalophobia um, don't want to see nor touch belly buttons, even on their own bodies. Some sufferers even think their insides could spill out of their navels. I don't want to make fun of anybody that has omphalophobia, but I do want to make fun of Audis. I don't get if you have an Audi belly button, and I'm being dead serious. Comment down below, okay? And and yes, this is a comedy routine, and yes, this is my opinion, and yes, this is silly to premise it all the way, the shape or form. So I think I do suffer from a mild form of omphalophobia because I just can't stand those little nubs coming out of people's guts. I don't get it. I don't know if your daddy wasn't close enough with the scissors to snip it or if you healed weird or wrong. I don't know. Matt, you could do some more research before you start ranting about Audi belly buttons. Yes, I could, but that's not as much fun as just running your mouth here on the Matthew Rayburn Show. Comment down below. <laughs> Sometimes ignorance can be a little fun. Anyway, so if you suffer from omphalophobia, I recommend being uh, not a psychiatrist, a psychologist, or any way, shape, or form, just a friend. Wink. I recommend a little bit of shock therapy but mild shock therapy. Start by going to a drawing class and drawing a naked body, and then when you get to the midsection where the belly button is, really strive your hardest to draw that belly button. Another really easy way to draw a belly button is to draw two curved shapes right here, 
and then you can make a little shadow mark if you want, and then a little, little six bloop, uh, on the bottom, and that could be the belly button. So I recommend if you have, I have to keep reading it because it's really hard to say, omphalophobia. If you suffer from omphalophobia, I recommend drawing belly buttons. It may help. This is No Fear Friday. Uh, use hashtag. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to create a, a new segment in the new uh, new hashtag, so I'm going to use hashtag No Fear Friday. So if you suffer from omphalophobia, I recommend drawing belly buttons. I, I do recommend looking at belly buttons, and I recommend because um, if you really fear that your guts are going to come out of your belly, <laughs> they're not going to come out of your belly unless you get some kind of like. Weird wound, but you know what? <laughs> but that, that, that's, I don't mean to trigger your omelette. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so so really, so on uh, on the Matthew Urban show, I, I like to do certain segments, and so comment down below if you like the No Fear Friday. I don't want. I don't like fear. I think fear creates weakness. No, I don't mean to get all Jedi and Yoda on you, but it metastasizes into some negative behaviors. So I understand that fear is a real thing, and that it can be utilized for good things. But a lot of times, it's a, a waste of time, especially. I don't mean to downplay it. I don't mean to, but especially if you have omphalophobia. It's a little uh, much. So anyways, so, <laughs> so there's that. So uh, thank you so much for listening and watching here on The Matthew Irwin Show. Please like this video, share this video, comment down below, follow me, all that kind of greatness, because I need the, you know, I'm trying to create a, a, a network of love here. I'm going to continue to sit at Betterment, and I know you want to be as well. So let's do this thing, baby. Let's do it. Also, I'm wearing red. Why? It's, hash it's, it's wear red day. We want to bring awareness to the ladies out there that have heart problems. One in three women die of heart disease, and 80% of those ailments are preventable. Get out there and help yourself out. Uh, see, we did that, we did that, we did that, we talked about that, we talked about how communism is bad. Okay, that's good, that's good. We did that, we did that. Oh, we, did, we, we didn't do that. That's a little transition I like to do because I like to edit it in between. And when you watch me on Instagram, uh, you see just the cut-up videos. Because in between the cut-up videos, I'm talking like this and doing -da 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 -da, that kind of stuff. So I can easily edit it so I don't have to you know, work too hard. <laughs> Let's read an article. New high of 90% of Americans satisfied with personal life. Fantastic. Let's read some bullet points. American satisfaction with personal life, highest in four-decade trend. That's impressive. Uh, two in three Americans say they have very satisfied uh, and a new look on life. Also a new high of life. That's a weird sentence. Uh, the third one is pretty interesting. Uh, High-income households, Republicans, married adults, are most satisfied. <laughs> Wow, a monogamous relationship and kind of down-to-earth policies help you be satisfied and happier? Oh, that's kind of weird. I don't mean to look like a Republican about to go to CSPAC, or, uh, CPAC, but I kind of look like a Republican getting ready to go to CPAC right now. But it's funny. And I'm self-aware. Matthew Rayburn Show. <laughs> no, really, it's good. To, and I'm, this is from uh, Gallup.com, and it's a, it's a great uh, study. They said it was over a four-decade trend. There's different um, points that they've, they've honed in on the different decades through the past, but these results are from Gallup's Mood of the Nation, conducted uh, January 2nd through the 15th, which also recorded a 20-year high in Americans confident in the U.S. economy. The percentage of Americans who report being satisfied uh, with their personal life is similar to the 86% who were satisfied in December uh, that were fairly happy, but it has increased since then. That is fantastic. That is good news. You know what that means? That means that people are happier. I don't know if that's a duh statement, but uh, really. So uh, this show is about promoting people being in a continuous state of betterment. This show is about love and, and kindness and, and, and being a positive force for good. Don't be a sponge of darkness. Don't take negativity and harbor it in your life. Learn from it. Add everything that happens to you as strength, yes. But don't become a victim of nothing. Don't become weak. Don't become a whiny loser. No one likes whiny losers. Anyways, I'm going to dance now and end the show. Do bow, do bow. Guys, really, have a blessed day. Um, use hashtag go red day. Wear your red day. Get that awareness out there for the ladies. No one likes filthy blood. What? No one likes heart disease. It hurts people. It hurts families because we love the ladies in our life, okay? We want them to be around longer, you know, because they're ladies and they're beautiful and they're great. So so like this video, um, uh, you know, watch this video, share this video, let people know about life. Now, what other hashtags we got here? It's bubblegum day. Chew some bubblegum. Eat some fettuccine Alfredo. I think I'll do that later. That sounds great. I'll do that for dinner. Guys, God bless you. God bless America. You know we need it.
I love you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>